Hey, everybody, we're here for a new episode of Five for Talking. Uh, this is the All Star Complaints Edition. Uh, where I'm here with Caps, Captain of the Show, the Sauce Boss, Muscles Marinara. Two All Stars right here. That's it. That's what I'm saying. We we didn't get voted in, um, but we could be the last man in if you vote us in right now at ESPN. I don't know where you vote. No, oh, come on. This is like an All Star podcast. Let's go. Yeah. Where are we going? I'm confused. <laughs> RLG. Cats. Should we? Should we go? Um, no, we're gonna order in, guys. Uh, I'll start it off here. So we'll get to the All Star talk right away. The All Star teams have been named, and I I will list out the entire teams. Um, but, uh, right now, currently they're still doing the last man in voting, which I'm not a hundred percent how that even works. I believe it's w- one more guy gets added to every team. Um, so right now the base rosters are down and Nathan McKinnon has been vocal about it over the last, uh, 24 hours saying that he thinks it should no longer be a, a one player per team situation or that there has to be at least one player per team. Sorry. Uh, he believes that five or six of the Colorado Avalanche should be in. I mean, and I'm not going to disagree with that. There's They're pretty good. Uh, I think I could – you named it earlier. There's at least three players that are not on this team that are having better seasons than him, uh, yeah. Kadri, Landeskog, and Rantanen. Uh, Makar's already on the team. Uh, he mentioned David Taves. That's – I mean, I don't know about that, but – I mean, McKinnon gets gets put into this for the situation. It's like Connor McDavid or Austin Matthews. They're the type of players that are going to make the All Star team every year. It's at least until they get older. Like as as the players get older, they are, they lose their popularity. And uh, even though some of them deserve to be in the All Star game, they won't make it based on that. But you know what I mean, right? Like McKinnon was going to make it as long as he was healthy. Yeah, I, I think uh, based on the fact that he thinks uh, there are, there should be four guys from Colorado that should be on the team, I agree with him. Uh, those guys are playing very well. Him, he missed some time. Uh, oh, yeah. I, it's not, uh, I, mean, I don't think he's doing bad. I just, for yeah. how much he's played, I don't <clears throat> think he should be in the All Star game. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will say, um, based on the research I did, uh, it looks like the fans vote the captains and oh, okay. the hockey ops guys, exec guys, vote in the rest of the team with the exception of the last two guys, um, which are, I think, the fans vote them in. So there's which, are two guys per team? Uh, I, I don't know that much. Um, I just know that the... The captains are voted by the fans, and then the executives uh, vote in the rest of the guys. Yeah. You it's, know what it's I know? very, very fresh, very early You know what on. I know? And you it's know what? convoluted as hell. Yeah, it is. Okay. I, my, my opinion on this is simply this. I think for this year, they should cancel the All-Star game because of the fact that So many teams are missing so many players and we don't know how things are going right now with the season. They are going to need all the time that they need to make up this season. I agree. And I think putting in the effort, okay, let's just go this way. They might even miss half their players come all-star game with with, what things are going on right now. Like, I don't even think that this is a, a, a really good idea to be doing this all-star game this year i think they should just cancel it and just try and get the season over and done with because we all know right now they're not going to the olympics so i I don't know what the point of this is i think this is to recoup interest because the olympic thing is not (laughs) happening and they're They're already on you they're already making so much money that i don't think that they lose by um, by having this also given only it's Generates only better revenue. for them, um, and I mean I, I agree with all of your points. Uh, I I wouldn't say don't do it, but I think what you are saying is right. So I, I I'm not in the the camp of don't do it, but you do make really good points, and I see them. <clears throat> I, I get I, that. I think I think a better solution would be for this year only to not have it during the season have it during the summer 
one game. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, you know, plan a time during the off season to have this game. I mean, you might get more people involved, to be honest. Maybe. You might get more fans. You might be able to do it bigger scale. Fans would be, yeah, fans would might might be missing the, the hockey at that point. Maybe they'll generate some interest then. I don't know. I'm just saying. It's, I mean, I, you're, it's you're right, though. Risque. If you think about that, if you could always use an indoor uh, baseball field or football field in the summertime and have a massive all-star game like and fill the whole arena like stadium massive stadium if you, that's get, a good point that's not if, a that's yeah if they can get um if they can get the machinery to keep the ice cool i think the they summer. would be able to do it well because it's indoors right a lot of those places like if you use the rogers center for example it's already Maybe. pretty cool in there as long as the roof is cold uh closed sorry okay well cool. we're moving on we're moving on uh yeah. let's let's talk uh just quick standings we like to go through the standings so uh, the Rangers are killing it right now. They're thriving. Uh, last little while, they've been steadily like 6-3 and 2. And 6-3 and 1. Like, sorry, that's what I meant to say. Uh, for, the, for the last like 20 games, steady. So good for them. Uh, they took over a Metro division that was really top heavy. I mean, the, the lower half is, isn't that strong, but that's, I, I kind of like that. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, the Rangers right now. 38 games played, 52 points. Carolina, 34 games played, 50 points. Um, Washington, 37 games played, 49 points. Rangers are hot right now. And, um, you know, Pittsburgh is not that far behind. Yeah, it's a a top 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 heavy division, though. It's top heavy. Um, it, it's good. Uh, it's nice to see that. Um, so what are you thinking as to why the Rangers are? I I thought the Rangers the have had a good are. team. The the fact that the Rangers, I already thought they had a good team. Okay, the the fact that I already believe that, and then they're doing this without almost any help from Lafreniere or Kako, is is pretty cool because that's two huge pieces of their team. That's that's two top three picks in the last four years. And both of those guys are doing nothing for you, but your team is still killing it right now. Um, good good job. Uh, Adam Fox came out of nowhere two years ago and guy's a monster. I would agree. Okay, I'm going to move on. Uh, Panthers, not a fluke. Just quickly, I know we, we touch on this every week that we do this, but... It's crazy to see that they're this strong. Like, they have not stopped rolling. It's just been consistent hockey all season long. With a a mid to early season so far coaching change. So, I mean, that's not easy to do for most teams. Uh, I would agree. Um, I think we've known since last year that they have a really good team. I think it just took a little time for everything to click. And it looks like things are clicking right now. Um, they won their last two games. Uh, I can't remember who they lost to before that. It was a team that beat them and Washington. And I just can't remember who it was. Oh, I think we even talked about that. We did talk about it. And I just can't remember who it yeah, was. Yeah, I'm not going to remember that. That team beat Washington and, and Florida. Um the span of three nights, but um, I think Florida and we've we've predicted this in the beginning of the year that they were going to do well, and I think that uh, it would be very interesting to see what they do in the playoffs. I think at this point, it's it's fair to say that they are going to make the playoffs. Uh, it's just going to be interesting to see what they do in the playoffs this year. Yeah, I would say they're a playoff lock at this point. Um, yeah. And how far and they're going to so, go? It is so funny because we're looking at the we're looking at the standings right now, and like they're all like about 36, 37, 38, 39 games in. They're not even halfway through the season yet. Yeah, we're getting it's there. It's crazy. Well, when we get to the halfway point, we'll drop our tier list to redo yeah. our our list from before. But okay, so the Bruins. There's still a lot of hockey to go. Oh yeah. So I bet this is this is a good point of a lot of hockey to go. The Bruins are hot as hell right now. So yep. hot. And Tuca came back and absolutely lit it up in his first game. 
Yep. Um, he's very happy happens. to be a, a, a really, really spot on Tuca that's happy to be back and playing hockey is a scary thing. I just want to say that. He's, uh, it looks like he's motivated, motivated to do well. Um, uh, you know, um, I don't think they, they, they lost a lot of pieces from that team with the exception of Charo, but that was like a year and a half ago. And, uh, they re-signed Taylor Hall, right? Yeah. So they didn't really, um, uh, lose a lot of pieces. And Taylor Hall and... hasn't done much this season. No, I'm just saying. As a, as yeah, a... no, I agree. Uh, I um, think you're right. They don't look as strong as they usually do, but hey, they're doing well right now. Yeah, and uh, you know, um, like I said, and this is why we brought up the whole thing about we have another, we just we have a, a half a season to go, and it would be crazy to see what the Boston Bruins could do from now until uh, game 82. They could end up being in like first place, man, because right now the top eight teams in uh, in the East are pretty close. Yeah, I would say it's a scary <laughs> sign in the, especially in the Atlantic, uh, for the top teams, the Leafs especially. Uh, but you don't know, good for them for now. <laughs> uh, touching on probably my uh, getting to the bottom here, the Oilers are an absolute mess. Um, I, it's been about seven days since the last video, uh, and they don't look any better than they did then. They've they've dropped completely out of a playoff spot. From they were in the top of the division for the first quarter of the season, and now they're not in a playoff spot. They were at the top of the conference for for a, a while. They have no problem scoring. <clears throat> they have a problem keeping the puck out of the net. Well, they don't have a goalie, in my mind. Yeah, it's just. Like, I look at the team, like, they're 113 goals for, 111 goals against. You're not going to be able to sustain that throughout the whole season and expect to be at the top of the league. Uh, I, I think you uh, said it. Season. I think you said it, but I've heard a few people say it uh, before as well, that they looked better than they really were when they were winning just because they were putting up so many goals. If you go back and look at those games, they were like 7-6 and 5-4. Yeah. Yeah. And... It's, not, it's not sustainable. It's not. You have to work on your defensive game. You have to work on keeping the puck out of the net. Um, because those, those type of games in which you're not able to score three, four, five, six, seven goals, and you need a game to win 3-1, 2-1, 1-0, you're not going to be able to do that because you got 111 goals against. It's, yeah. It's, it's not going to happen. I it's agree. not going to happen. Um, look, if you look at the standings right now, Vancouver, who's underneath them, 93 goals for 104 goals against. And they were on a tear for the last little bit. You know what I mean? It's 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 not it's it's not sustainable. Yeah, I it, agree. The, the team above Edmonton is Calgary right now, 105 goals for and 87 goals against. Well, and Calgary is a rough and tumble team too, as well. So on top of their better defensive ability, they're still scoring, and they have the ability to play physical, and they actually have two pretty good goalies. So. You know, I, I, I'm going to get off this subject, but I, I, I just want to say, like, you can't be relying on a 75-year-old Mike Smith and an unproven Koskinen, who is a good goalie, but he's a backup goalie. He's not a starting goalie. And uh, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Uh, I guess we could talk about some of the rumors about Edmonton, if you want to Well, I, we that, can, right? I mean, uh, can, I, can I give you one more first? Actually, sure. you know what? Let's talk about Edmonton, because there's, there's a few rumors here. Evander uh, Kane and Mark Andre Fleury. Evander Kane and Mark Andre Fleury, um, as well as there is a bunch of defensemen that are up in the rumor mill uh, for rental packages, and the Oilers are linked to all of them. It's Klingberg, Giordano, and Chichurin. I think that's how you say his name from uh, from Arizona. But Arizona wants an arm and a leg for for him. They want like a huge package. They, they want what goalie. 
Yeah, I mean, they do need a goalie, but I, they need defense too. But it's so funny because, like, look at their pairings, the defensive pairings. It's not that bad, actually. It's not that bad, but it's not like... Duncan Keith, Cody Cece. Uh, okay, hold Tyson on. Tyson Be- uh, uh, Berry, um, Russell. So two, um, you just named two guys that can't play defense, a really no, old just saying, guy, like, I'm, and that's why a I said it's guy. not that bad. So I'm saying it's not that bad. It's not the worst in the league. Yeah. Um, Lindholm and uh, who's the last person? Anyways, whatever. I'll I'll think about it. No, but it's uh, Nurse. Nurse. Oh, geez, Nurse. Well, and they have that other guy. They have that really good defenseman that that keeps getting injured. Uh, who's the guy? The one they drafted. Oh my god, I don't want right. to. F- <laughs> uh, okay, well, I'm just gonna segue off of them uh, while I figure out what this guy's name is. But you're absolutely right. They need a goalie. I yeah, think they need a goalie. They've needed a goalie for a while, and and you know what? Take a shot. Why not? Uh, Montreal looks absolutely horrendous. Even worse. Uh, they recently, which this is, I guess, kind of a segue. Um, after how bad the Leafs lost to Arizona, and I say bad because losing to them at all is a horrific experience, uh, Montreal is now the worst team in the NHL. So, tied for points with Car- with Coyotes, lower wins, one win less. Um, that is like, I'm just shocked. I'm I'm not even pulling out the haterade right now. I'm actually shocked. I can't believe that. Montreal? Yeah. It, it's so funny because I saw a tweet the other day by Andrew Raycroft, Capos, and of all people, Andrew Raycroft. And he He's goes, been talking a lot of crap online if nobody knows this yet. Yeah. He goes, how is it possible that this team made the finals last year? We were the saying the same team. thing. Yeah. And... Yes, Weber and Price are huge, huge pieces, but ultimately it's pretty much the same team as last year. Yeah. And there's no way that they should be doing this bad. Like maybe in the middle of the pack, but it's it's, on it's pa- crazy. If you're going to ask me on paper where do they belong, out of a playoff spot, 100%. But if you're going to ask me, based on what that team on paper did last year, where do they belong? I 100% agree with you. They should be a middle-of-the-pack team. Um, If you just showed me their roster and didn't tell me any context, I would say they do belong somewhere in the bottom. But, I mean, it's crazy that that they – like Nick Suzuki came out stinking it up. Cole Caulfield got sent back to the minors after that – after he demolished the Leafs in the playoffs. Uh like I, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. Drew N came back and, and did well, but and it's so funny you mentioned Nick Suzuki, uh, who's not doing well at all. He, I believe, he got nominated for the All Star game this year. By the way, yeah, one player has to make it from every team, so I guess I, I probably would have picked Jonathan Drew N. I don't know if he's injured, uh, but uh, I mean, it is what it is. I'm not going to sit around and complain about that. It was Clef Bomb, by the way, the other defenseman. Um, so there's a lot of trade rumors as well. well I'm, we're going to end on the Leafs, and then I'll read out the All-Star roster because I forgot to read out the All-Star roster. But uh, we'll end with the Leafs. But the last thing I want to say is there's a lot of rumors going around now that uh, Tomas Hurdle is going to be up for rental. And he's like the number one guy on the market right now. Uh, he's a center. He can score. He's been a, a top player for San Jose for the last couple of years. Um, they're saying if he you can get a sign and trade with them, he's going to be worth a lot of money, a lot of a return. But right now, for as just as a rental, they want like a prospect, maybe a minor league player, and a first round pick. And the Rangers are very high in contention for getting him, which I think that would be huge for them. But, but you mentioned the Leafs, so are you saying the Leafs are in? No, no, I'm saying the Leafs are coming okay. next. I don't oh, want to wait it. to talk okay. about the Leafs, but right, cool. I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, it is news. So we were here to bring you news. I don't really have a thought process on it yet because nothing's really happened, but I feel like we should Same just here. mention it. Um, mention it yeah. yeah. So let's, we're getting into the Leafs. Um, I'm very disappointed with the last game. Um, I turned it off. Yeah. It, like they ran into a hot goalie. Uh, they, it was like, 50 to 12 shots or whatever the case is or whatever the shots were. Um, I don't think that 
to me that that is a legitimate excuse anymore for this team. Um, and there's no excuse that they should have lost to the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, one, two, points are, are so imperative right now from now until the end of the season. Those were two points that they could have like easily have gotten, which they need to, to you know, uh, distance themselves from Boston. You know what I mean? And to keep themselves in that top three. Yeah, you're right. And it was all happy, happy, fun times until Boston got hot. And now it's like, what do I do? Because now Boston's right up my ass. And they are not a bad team. Yeah. Um, I I watched the game. Matthews is a beast. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, That first line was great. I don't know what the hell's going on with Nylander, Tavares, and Kerfoot. I mean, Nylander's playing great. But it just seems to me that line is not really gelling well right now. I don't know. If it's it's only been a couple a... of games, so I don't want to like throw a wrench at it. Yeah, but... Maybe it is the whole it... COVID thing and, and, you know, the layoff or whatever the case may be, but they just weren't playing that well. No, I, I agree. I, I, I think like at this point, all four lines need to be, need to get going because I, honestly, that, that line was never really touched at all throughout the season. The what Leafs, uh, but the, for the as far as the rest of the team go goes, I understand there's injuries, and I understand with all the stuff cool going protocols. on right now. But I, I, I can't understand when I look at other teams in the NHL and then I look at the Leafs. How often the Leafs change their lineup? Like no other team does that. Most teams will run even with a bad lineup for multiple games before they make changes. If the Leafs have one bad game, they change all the lines. Yeah, you're really messing with the chemistry when you're doing that, man. I don't know what what the deal is. I don't know if it's trying to like get people to do different things, but like, you know, at this point, you should have your lineup. That's you the one thing I'll give Babcock. Lines. Babcock was like, we were freaking out how bad some of those lines were doing, and he would not change the lines. So, I mean, um, I feel like they're yeah. asking. We just felt that we just said that that was the wrong lines, but yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. But he 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 needed. There has to be some kind of stability right now, especially when everyone's healthy. The lines have to stay the same. Just just leave it alone. Um, I'm okay with that. I don't really have too much Leafs. Um, there's a lot of rumors going around that Marner is on the trading block. No, he's um, been like that for the last. Yeah, ever I mean, since he signed that contract. <laughs> I, I'm still on the Marner doubter situation. Uh, I, I know he's a capable player, and I know he can get points. Uh, he's decent on the defensive end, I won't lie, but he doesn't seem to come through when you need him. And Matthews has been so reliable, like game in, game out. He he does what he does. He's not the full package, but he knows what he has to do, and he does it every game. Yeah, like uh, it, it's come to a point where it looks as though that Matthews doesn't really need Marner to, to score goals. You know what I mean? Um, so, but I, I, you know, like the, when they're on, they're on. You know what I mean? Those they, they play very well, but um, it seems as though this season they haven't really played enough uh, to really, really get going. Like they could do it, uh, but uh, it just seems like with what's going yeah. on, it just messes with everything. No, it's, and and Marner was injured for a short. Marner was injured for for a short period of time. Matthew was it was injured coming into the season. Um, you know, they 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 even they really need to get this chemistry going uh because you know, um before you know it, before you know you, you blink and the playoffs are here and we can't afford them trying to figure things out. You know what I mean? So we need to get this thing going. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. And uh, like I said, I've said this multiple times throughout the last couple of years. Matthews is a top-tier talent. He's going to create on his own. He's going to get into funks. He's going to get out on his own. And when he's hot, he doesn't need anyone to help him. He's Connor McDavid. He's Sidney Crosby. He's Alex Ovechkin type of player. It doesn't matter who's playing with him. He's going to make them better. And it's... It's we have to get this out of our head that Matthews needs help. We have to give Matthews the players that complement what he does and not just try to put star power out there. Because when Marner was out, 
he had nobody playing with him except I don't even know who was on that line, and they were fine. No, but I give those guys credit. Kasha and, and uh, Bunting kick doing, ass, man. Doing what they had to do. They kick ass. I, I really enjoy the way they're playing. I yeah. really enjoy the we, way we said that since play. the beginning. I, 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 they're doing well. I yep. doubted Bunting a lot at the start. I think everyone did, and he came out good, and good for him. Yep. All right, so I don't have anything else, Leafs. I'll read out the all-star lineup. Uh, save it till the end here because I forgot. Okay, so for the Atlantic Division, you have Matthews, uh, Drake Batherson, Dylan Larkin, Jonathan Huberdeau, Patrice Bergeron, Nick Suzuki, Rasmus Dahlin, Victor Hedman, Vasilevsky, and Campbell as the goalies. Uh, mo- a lot of the, a lot of the teams have uh, have like two or one defenseman, which I find really strange. Only one team has three Ds. Uh, the Metropolitan Division has Ovechkin, Giroux, Kreider, Aho, Hughes, Fox, Pelich, Wierenski, Jari, and Anderson. That's a pretty good team. Mm-hmm. Um, Central Division has McKinnon, Debrinket, Keller, Pavelski, Kaprizov, Connor, Kairou, uh, Makar, uh, Talbot, and Suaro, uh, Juicy, Juicy Suaros in that. Yeah, and the Pacific, wow. Yeah. Pacific Division has McDavid, Adrian Kempe, Goudreau, Eberle, Eberle, uh, Dry Seidel, Mark Stone, Timo Meyer, Petrangelo, and the only defenseman on the team, John Gibson and Thatcher Demko. Like, to be honest with you, the Metro Division and the Atlantic Division, the two Eastern teams, are so, 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 so much better than the two Western teams. It's kind of strange. I, I think the, the Atlantic has the best shot this year. I don't know what they get for winning. Do they gain something? Not sure. I thought there was a stake. Uh, either way, yeah, they're, the Atlantic Division looks really good, man. I'd love to see a line with Matthews and Huberto. Um Anyways, I don't have anything else. Do you have anything else? Oh. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let us know who you think should have made the All-Star Game.